A user named Learn Quranic Arabic has made a video in which he presents the Quran challenge. The challenge is to produce either one, a verse in the Quran that contradicts a modern scientific fact, uh, two, to show a linguistic mistake, three, to add, subtract or change a word in the Quran which would make it superior, or four, produce three verses like the Quran. Hang on a minute. Three Sauras? Shouldn't, shouldn't that be one Sora? Ah, oh, no, 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 no. Ten, ten Sauras. That was it, wasn't it? Yeah, ten. Ten. Now, there are a few places in the Quran that do actually contradict modern scientific facts. The thing is, though, is that the Quran is often so vague that uh, Muslims can easily claim that the clear words of the Quran actually mean something completely different. But here we go anyway. Scientific error number one. People used to think that stars were really close to the Earth. Here, the Quran erroneously says that shooting stars are actually stars, and that they are close enough in order to react to the evil ones. The closest star to our solar system is Proxima Centauri, 4.2 light years away, which means in order to get here and react to the evil ones and shoot them down, it would need to travel at the speed of light for 4.2 years. And then when it got here, it would be approximately 70,000 times bigger than the Earth. So, my challenge is, explain how stars are missiles to shoot down evil ones. Scientific error number two. People used to believe that there were four elements, earth, wind, fire and water, and everything was made of those four things. Here in the Quran it says that jinn are made of the flame of fire. In fact, fire is a chemical process which acts on other elements, other atoms, such as hydrogen or oxygen. You cannot make anything of fire. So, challenge number two, find a credible chemist who will tell you that fire is a substance from which you can make things. Scientific error number three, from Jewish creation mythology, the earth was created before the heavens. This error is also in the Quran. So, we have the earth existing and its vegetation or sustenance, and then Later, it goes on to describe that the heavens are still in this kind of mysterious, smoky, kind of a unformed state after the earth and the vegetation existed. Does it really say that? Well, yes. In the very next verse, it goes on to say that he then ordained the seven heavens um, and went on to deck the no nether heaven, the closest heaven, with lamps, meaning stars. So the stars were formed afterwards. Now, in reality, stars were formed in nuclear fusion um, for around 9 billion years before the Earth even formed. So, that's wrong. So, challenge number three, find a credible cosmologist who will confirm that the Earth existed before the stars. And now, on to improvements in the Quran, where I can either add a word, take a word away, or change a word, and improve the Quran. <coughs> now, I was going to wait until I had more data before telling anyone about this. But, I was already working on the case, and I've created a website, which you can see at thebetterquran.com. Here are some examples from this site. Um, chapter 3, verse number 7. Uh, due to the lack of punctuation in oral, oral recitation, it's unclear who knows the meaning of the Quran. Is it only Allah, or is it Allah and his believers? Uh, another one is chapter 4, verse number 34. Now, the user learned Quranic Arabic. I'm talking to you now. You previously made a video on this subject. Um, explaining how nobody can ever reach the instruction to beat their wives because if they follow the two previous instructions everything will all be sorted out or they'll be divorced and there's no need to ever hit them. Now, I think that this verse could have been made much more clear by saying, but don't. 
if you add in those two simple words what you end up with is a verse that says do A, do B, but don't beat them. Now that is 100% clear and certainly a vast improvement if that's what the Quran actually means because there are a lot of Muslims in the world who believe that they can beat their wives. Chapter 41 verses 9 through to 12. Now I mentioned the erroneous creation order in the scientific uh, errors bit earlier. All Allah needed to do was to rearrange these sentences into the correct order. So in this case I haven't added, subtracted or altered a word. I've used the exact same words but I've just put the sentences in the correct chronological order. And that is a big improvement in the Quran because it puts everything in the exact order that things happened in reality. Chapter 65 verse number 4. Um, this verse tells men how long that they must wait before they have sex with a woman. Um, it says that they must wait for three months, three menstrual cycles. Um, but for the um, the women who have lost their menstrual cycles, their menstrual cycles have ended due to the menopause, they must wait for three months. But it then goes on to say the same amount of time, three months, should be waited for those who do not have menstrual, uh, menstrual cycles. Now considering it's already covered women who've ended their menstrual cycles, this looks suspiciously like it's saying that you can have sex with um, girls before their period start. Now, assuming sex with children who have not yet had their period is forbidden in Islam, what I would suggest Allah did here would be just to strike the last bit of the text off uh, and then there wouldn't be any confusion uh, leading to people thinking that they can have sex with children. Chapter 70 verses 29 to 30, these verses give men permission to have sex with their female slaves. Um, seeing as these slaves are property, um, I think it would have been advisable to add a clause at the end, uh, something like, with their permission, so, just to make it clear that uh, it's not their right to have sex with these people as their property, but the slave must also be willing. Um, and while we're at it, you can add that clause to chapter 23, verses 5 and 6 as well. And chapter 86, verses 6 to 7, uh, these verses say that semen comes from between the backbone and the ribs, which looks suspiciously wrong. Um, my suggestion to Allah here is that um, if instead he just said that semen came from the private parts, that would have been much more accurate. Well, that'll do for now. Be sure to make sure, no, not be sure to make sure, uh, be sure to check out thebetterquran.com. If anyone watching this video has got a suggestion for how Allah could have done a bit of a better job of his book, then there's a form on there that you can enter the details, submit it, I'll take a look, and if it's not a load of rubbish, then I'll put it on.